You're watching Spotlight, and today I'm joined by Kerry Provost and Kimberly Richter, co-directors of Naperville Youth Symphony Orchestra. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited to have you as this is a first time for you, as this is a new organization. So Kimberly, tell us a little bit about it. The Naperville Youth Symphony Orchestra, or NISO as we call it, was born out of a desire of Carrie's and mine and a man by the name of Michael Giuliani to reach out to the community and neighboring communities and provide an excellent, diverse, inclusive musical orchestral experience. Um, we have kids from fifth grade through 12th grade. We started off with 78. Carrie and I were hoping for 40 kids and we had over 100 auditions and we accepted 78. We now have over 90. We don't quite know how that happens. They just keep coming and showing up. And um, we've just been so excited about it. The kids are having a great time. They had an excellent concert. They have another one coming up. We're doing auditions. And it's just been a very positive experience for these young musicians and for us as professionals as well. Well, that's exciting. I mean, that that's a lot of people right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your plans, because obviously you, you had an idea. It's taken off very quickly. So kind of what are your plans moving forward? Yeah, well, as Kimberly said, we were not even sure if we would be able to field an entire symphony orchestra when we just, this just started back in August. And uh, we were just so floored by the response and to get to have more than 98 students right now we're so excited and what we would like to do in the fall is split the group into two two complete uh, symphonic orchestras and uh, we have a I am a member of the DuPage Symphony Orchestra I play violin and Barbara Schubert has invited us to uh, do a side-by-side -side performance with the DuPage Symphony on the uh, Halloween concert, October 29th. Wonderful. So that'll be a new uh, activity, and that's a really fun concert, I can say from experience, because all of the orchestra members wear costumes, and Barbara Schubert wears costumes, so our students will be able to take part in that. We, uh, we also are hoping to start a full-fledged chamber music program. We've already started. We have a few small chamber ensembles, which we'll, some of them will play on our spring concert. And we're, going to, uh, we're planning to have three concerts next year instead of two. So we'll have a concert in March. Did you want to say anything about that? December, March, and May. And May. In Wentz Hall. Nice. Well, now, so tell us about your first concert, because you, you, mm -hmm. you've had your first. That must have been a very proud moment for the both of you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was surreal. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think Carrie and I, I think the mature people were actually out on the stage performing. Carrie and I would come back into the room off side once, and we'd be high-fiving each other and jumping <laughs> up and down for joy, because... It was amazing what these kids did after about 12 weeks mm -hmm. of rehearsal. First time a lot of them have ever played in an orchestra. And the first rehearsal we had, we ended up throwing out all of our music because it was too easy. And we had to go back and get, so they played, I like to say, big girl, big boy. Um, stuff that the DSO has played. Mm -hmm. uh, we started off with Fanfare for the Common Man by Copeland, um, which is a piece that makes professional brass players tremble. We ended with the Hallelujah Chorus. The Naperville Chorus sang with us. The um, YNS, Young Naperville Singers, is singing with us on our May concert. Mm -hmm. As Carrie said, we're having this grand thing with the DSO, and the Chicago Sinfonietta has reached out to us. And I just want to say, for me, uh, I've played on the stage of Wentz Hall many times as a performer with the DuPage Symphony. And for me to step out on that stage as a conductor was an out-of-body experience, and I was I was I felt very serene, and uh, just it was just glorious to see a full house out there and I'm getting chills right yeah. now thinking about it. Well, and I think it's so interesting. You talk about I mean, it's not just that you had 90 kids and and you're growing. You clearly packed the house. That's a big house to pack. Mm -hmm. So there clearly is this need. What what do you think is driving to that need? Obviously, because you you've stumbled on not stumbled necessarily, but mm -hmm. you've got onto something that really clearly was a need for so many people to come out. What do you think that tapped into? Carrie and I. Um, 
are blessed with that we have brought between us over 60 years of experience. She has had a very successful career in the public school field and with the DSO as a, as a violinist. I have been at North Central College for 17 years. I've taught for over 30 years as well and played professionally and, and work with other youth orchestras in the area. Um, we bring this experience, we bring this vitality. We're two women that have just had a dream and we wanted to give to these young musicians what we received at their age. Um, I grew up as a Chicago Symphony brat. I was in Chicago Youth Orchestra and then I was in the Civic when I was only 16, which is the training orchestra for the Chicago Symphony. And Carrie and I have always treated these young musicians, whether they're in fifth grade or twelfth grade, as professionals, as we would treat our colleagues. There is just no difference. They're held accountable, but yet we've given them joy. They have fun while they're doing it. And I think it's that joy that just keeps bringing them back. These kids, music is their language. That's it. They all come together with that, and it's just wondrous to and see. Word of mouth. I mean, I think there's Huge. been a lot of word of mouth. Uh, all of these students are telling their friends about it back at their schools yes. and uh, more and more students keep wanting support to support from the directors orchestra mm -hmm. and band directors college professors parents it's just private teachers. private teachers it's just caught on that's wonderful I mean that it's just exciting to hear you both talk about it mm -hmm. so your next concert coming up is again tell me when it is Mother's May, Day May Mother's 14th Day. okay three o'clock Wentz Hall okay mm -hmm. and where can we get tickets you can get them on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. They're, they're five dollars each. We started at a, a fee where we wanted to, anybody to be able to come despite finances and if somebody came and said I can't afford to pay they can come in anyway and we will make that work because that's what NISO is all about. Mm -hmm. I think that's lovely and I think you talked a little bit about it. music is their language, it's their form of communication mm -hmm. and clearly you're communicating out into the community in a very rich way. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you want to tell them about the program? For the May 14th concert? Our May 14th concert is an American salute and it deals with completely American composers. It does mm -hmm. have a patriotic slant, but not all the music is, is patriotic. The kids are playing um, Copeland, mm -hmm. they're doing, uh, gosh, Morton Gould, they're doing Alfred Edward Reed, Reed, all these American composers that are just forefront on the field, John Philip Sousa, they were doing the Stars, um, Stripes Forever, and Dr. Ron Keller from the Naperville Municipal Band is guest conducting that piece. Well, that is wonderful. Well, I want to thank you both for coming in. I think that's so exciting, and I wish you all the best with this new endeavor, and may the language of music continue to shine on you. That's just terrific. Thank, thank you, you, Jay. Thank you so much. If you would like to learn more about the Naperville Youth Symphony Orchestra, and their upcoming concert, please visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay with us. We'll be right back with more Spotlight.